The Germans' purpose is to form an opposition government under the Duke of Windsor, having first changed public opinion by propaganda. The Germans think King George will abdicate during an attack on London. That report by the palace secretary is an indication the palace were being kept briefed of the extent to which Windsor was treating with the Germans. And we have the German cables, uh, which show the extent to which they thought he was playing games with them. So it seems to me that we have two and two here, and it makes four. In other words, it makes the Duke of Windsor a traitor. Edward was ordered by Churchill to leave Madrid immediately for Lisbon. From there, he was to make arrangements to proceed home. But Churchill had not predicted with whom the couple would stay. In Portugal, the Windsors were given the loan of the house in Cascais by Ricardo Espiritu Santo, who was a leading banker. Now, the significant thing about this was that he was also a Nazi sympathizer and in touch with the Germans and the German embassy. And um, Windsor very often used to get drunk at dinner parties in, in Kashkash and say some very indiscreet things, which Spiritual Santa would then pass on. Churchill was furious that Edward was stalling for time and also associating with known Nazi sympathizers. He sent a cable reminding Edward of his duties. Your Royal Highness has taken active military rank and refusal to obey direct orders of a competent military authority will create a serious situation. Edward can't have missed the implication. Churchill was threatening the ex-king with court-martial. Even so, Edward chose to ignore the cable and demonstrated how intimate he was with the enemy by seeking the Germans' help on a domestic matter. The Duchess had left some personal effects, linen and silver, at their Paris apartment when they fled south. She now wanted them retrieved and instructed her maid to travel to Paris. But by now, the French capital was firmly under Nazi occupation. The Duke's solution was breathtakingly simple. He requested papers for the maid's passage from the Gestapo. When you think what was going on, this was just after Dunkirk, that they should actually be in contact with the enemy in order to retrieve their belongings from their house, it, it's extraordinary. By 1940, the Luftwaffe had begun their first raids on British shipping. It was now that Edward showed his true colors. Remarkably, he advised his pro-Nazi hosts that the bombing of Britain would force her to accept Hitler's ultimatums. Edward the peace broker now turned warmonger. This extraordinary message was passed on to Berlin by the German ambassador in Lisbon, Heunigen Heuner. Edward is waiting for a turn of events favorable to him. He is convinced that if he had remained on the throne, war would have been avoided. And he characterizes himself as a firm supporter of a peaceful arrangement with Germany. The Duke believes with certainty that continued heavy bombing will make England ready for peace. He was suggesting that prolonged bombing of England would almost certainly bring about peace, which is an almost incredible thing for an Englishman to say, which would mean the deaths of all his fellow, of so many of his fellow countrymen. And it also was a particularly dangerous moment for the British government for him to be taking this line, because there was a certain pro-peace party in Britain at that time. Ribbentrop had a new plan to reassert control over Edward and get him back to Spain. An elaborate scheme was hatched to invite the Duke and Duchess on a hunting trip near the Spanish border, and from there to secretly cross the frontier. They would then take refuge at a castle in Spain. 
The German plan was that once there, Edward would publicly reject English policy and sever ties with his brother, the king. The owner of the castle in Spain was the Count of Montaco. He was ordered to make it available to the Windsors from where Edward would make this devastating announcement. El, el duque iba a hacer una, un manifiesto, iba a publicar un manifiesto de, desde mi casa en favor de la paz. Esto a mí la verdad es que tampoco me gustó porque para, para mí entrañaba una, una traición a, un, a, a Inglaterra que estaba que estaba en esos momentos luchando desesperadamente y luego además porque realmente consideraba que esta que esta esta actitud del, del duque de Windsor se contradecía con lo que podía ser el sentido de un ex rey respecto a su país. Edward was under increasing scrutiny. The villa was surrounded by a variety of shadowy agents and informers. Ribbentrop decided the best way to ensure that Edward returned to Spain was to make him too scared to stay in Portugal. His agents smashed the windows of the villa. Certainly, he succeeded in intimidating the Duke. Angel de Velasco, a Spanish agent working for the Germans, was sent to the villa to bring the Duke back to Spain. El Duque, pues, el hombre estaba temblando. Prácticamente, había momentos en los que no sabía lo que decía. Vamos, sí sabía lo que decía y lo que quería decir, pero que no acertaba a decir las cosas bien. Por eso cuando se me pregunta qué opinión tiene usted de aquella entrevista, pues la opinión es eso de un hombre que está aturdido, que está eh, temblando y que no sabe qué es lo que va a pasar un momento más tarde. Churchill stepped in and sent Walter Monckton, a close friend of the Duke, to Lisbon with a letter which contained a careful warning. Many sharp and unfriendly ears will be pricked up to catch any suggestion that your Royal Highness takes a view about the war, or about the Germans, or about Hitlerism, which is different from that adopted by the British nation and Parliament. It's possible, in my judgment, that there was some particular piece of information that Monckton made it clear to the Duke, perhaps in a rather unsporting way, that Churchill had got hold of, maybe about the Duchess and her past, that would be made public, that might destroy his uh, and her reputation. And I think that something like that has to explain why the Duke suddenly, within the space of only a matter of hours, changed his mind and decided that he wasn't going to accept the German offer. The message that Monckton brought was that Edward should take up an appointment as governor of the Bahamas with immediate effect. With the threat of a court-martial still in the air, Edward realized he had no alternative but to leave Lisbon. For someone of his rank, a governorship in the far reaches of the empire was a humiliating rejection. But still, the Germans held out the hope that Edward would change his mind. His host, Ricardo Espirito Santo, desperately encouraged Edward not to give up on the German plans for a negotiated peace. The Portuguese banker finally revealed the identity of his real masters. The intermediary this time specifically referred that he had authority from Berlin. And the Duke, interestingly enough, did not say, no, leave, this is treachery. He actually paid tribute to Hitler's desire for peace and said that he couldn't disobey the orders that he had been given which, and I quote here, would disclose his intentions prematurely. Now, this suggests he had a long-term strategy, which he saw he might still be able to operate from the Bahamas. 